Good afternoon, everyone. Sahara has fish. Catfish and tilapia across mega lakes in northern and central Africa. 7,000 years ago, this would have been the world's largest lake, and you find habitation along these areas and massifs. Areas in gray, fully inhabited. Today, we find rock art. Other anomalies in Africa, the Rakat structure. Massive obelisks, which we can't even lift with our machinery today. And perhaps at the same time, the lost civilization 8,000 years ago would explain the tech to be able to lift things. And in the year 2020, it's so important to keep your body functioning at optimal performance. And collagen may be the closest thing we will ever get to a true fountain of youth. After all, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and essentially the glue that holds it all together. Even worse, various lifestyle factors that you may have been exposed to, such as poor diet, lack of sleep, smoking, pollution, stress, all of these can deplete your collagen levels even faster. And the year-over-year -year loss of the most abundant protein in our bodies is the key reason that we start to look and feel older. When you're middle-aged, you're only producing half of the collagen you did in your youth. My focus is about digestive health because the change in our diets from foods being unavailable and moving to seasonal harvests and the entire spectrum of availability of foods is changing. There's so much more to talk about with the benefits of collagen. You can visit healthwithadapt2030.com to learn more. The link's in the description box below. Starting off here, fossils discovered Sahara Wait a second, if it was 12,000 years ago, how is it a fossil? I thought that took millions of years. Between 12,000 years ago up to, say, 7,000 years ago, massive mega lakes, tilapia, catfish, a full interconnected system of rivers, estuaries, all connected through the Nile River. Apparently, you could go from Chad all the way to the Nile through this system of water bodies, this is a rendition of the mega lakes. So as these dried out over the centuries and millennia, if it's starting to rain again as it is in Africa, these would be the first places that would start to fill. So if you were going to put a factory or grow food there, you would probably set up along these old drainage basins. Noticing the northernmost lake, that's in Libya as we know it today. Then we have the White Nile mega lake in Sudan. And it's incredibly interesting that Ethiopia is also building the massive dam to create this same lake in effect. So they must know there's more rain coming. This is a multi-millennia cycle that's repeating at the moment. NASA images here showing these mega lakes would be the largest lakes on the planet 7,000 years ago. So what if they were to refill? What if they're beginning to refill? slowly through these changes in our atmosphere, the West African monsoon. You'd probably set up right along where the river edges were, where the lake boundaries were, but going further in, you would know where the drainage canals were, what are called rivers and streams. The water would go there first and start to fill up at the very base of what these mega lakes would have been. Now beside these lakes, mountains, well, massifs, so these rock structures sticking above the sand today were fully habited. And what we find is the remnants are the rock art of antiquity for us to discover. And one of the most famous areas here is the same at the edge of that mega lake that you saw in Libya. Tadrart Aukas Mountains. And some of the oldest art up there, they call it the Wild Fauna period, 10,000 to 6,000 B.C. Fits right in that same era pastoral period is when animal husbandry was still in full use. But wait a second, that's 5500 to 2000 BC. I thought it was a total desert by then, according to the ancient history for the Egyptians building the pyramids. Uh, I guess that's another piece of history that doesn't fit. But where we do see these massifs, gray areas on the map. And next to them would have been these mega lakes. So you can see just like we are today, people inhabit areas around lakes. Sometimes it's a mountain on a lake. Farmers, caravanners, which means they were trading amongst each other, herders as well. And then suddenly the story picks up with the Egyptians. Sorry, where's the disconnect there between all the water and all the previous civilizations across Central and Northern Africa? And then all we get is the Egyptians. Looks like this today, 
But you have to think, several thousand years ago, those sand dunes would have been gone, and this area would have been full of water. That's why they're finding the fossils, quote-unquote, from 12,000 years ago, catfish, tilapia. The interesting thing here are the headless figures. One of my favorite pieces of rock art. Back to the Mega Lake. And if you go to this website called Flood List, which covers all the floods across the world by continent, you'll find these very same countries again and again and again and again mentioned in the massive floods that have been happening for the last three years across Central and Northern Africa. Mainly Chad, Nigeria, Mali, and other areas you don't normally associate with massive floods. Image here from the satellites again, NASA. You can see the termination point of where the old lakes were. And interestingly, more water is now pouring into these lakes as the drainage basin from all the record floods. Now, it's not anywhere close to being what the mega lakes were 7,000, 6,000 years ago. But we've been told again and again that Africa is going to dry out into an absolute zero moisture place. But what's happening on the ground is quite different. The dried out riverbeds are very discernible on satellite maps. And this is a good indication of how the drainage basins worked. If you were a corporation or a country that was going to grow food in these areas again, start up massive agriculture, I would probably follow these riverbeds, put the infrastructure, the railroad terminus points, and base of operation on major inflows into what these old drainage basins were, which would explain the massive amount of Chinese investment projects sitting on these exact river basins. I put this country forecast map together last year. Areas in green are countries that are coming online with more moisture and rainfall that could build out their grow zones from essentially nothing into a massive grain growing belt across the planet. A new continental size grow zone emerging in these same areas. And looking at the Maunder minimum temperature reconstruction map, Africa. Morocco area, and that extends all the way down into Central Africa. The darker blue it gets, the more rainfall it is. So we could see there would be massive changes inbound into Africa during this cycle of the Grand Solar Minimum. I personally feel it's a much greater powerful cycle somewhere in the 2000 to, say, 3600 year iteration this time of the cycle intensity. And wherever we look across Africa, there are an enormous amount of anomalies there. The ricotte structure, I encourage you to take a look at this. And those of you that like plasma discharge from space onto the planet, this is about the closest we can get of an after strike. And you have to wonder what kind of energy would be emanating from there. And if anybody previously would have built on top of that ancient civilization, perhaps. And another striking feature in Africa Egypt, where most of the modern history of what we know about Africa is taught back to us. The pharaoh started at this date and then it ended here. We're looking at something 1,200 tons and how deeply they needed to dig down into that bedrock to even start to carve this thing out. Now, 1,200 tons is beyond what we can do with our cranes today. And if we did it, the entire circumference of that would be lined with the biggest, heaviest, most powerful lifting devices on our planet working in unison. So I'm wondering what kind of tech was used back then in terms of vibration and levitation frequency to change the structure, the molecular structure of that granite and rock for just a moment. Because this is so far out of the bounds of anything that could even be moved at that time according to they're using winches with papyrus rope or something like this there's zero percent chance they could have moved that now why would they take the time to create that unless they were going to move it so again parts of history just don't match with the stories and over to persia and baghdad the syrian deserts oman and yemen lost civilization may have existed beneath the persian gulf eight thousand years ago shallow inland sea all the way up to the Fertile Crescent. So perhaps this is where the tech originated from that was able to lift such huge megalithic stones into place. Because it's in Lebanon as well. It's not only in Egypt. And when we look around to the fresh water supplies that were in this area, 
in the Middle East and North Africa and Central Africa and the amount of habitation that was truly in that place that we're not being told about vast civilizations through swaths of areas that have just disappeared from our history into a fog of narrative. And the question that should be asked is, who has records of this tech? How it was built, how it functioned, and who's currently holding the blueprints for it? And if you're looking for more information on changes across our planet that I don't talk about here on YouTube, join me over on Patreon forward slash adapt2030 because there's more to the world than we're allowed to see. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.